There's no sporting event in the world that draws in as much viewership and interest than the FIFA World Cup. In fact, the 32-team month-long tournament Qatar is hosting in 2022 is expected to be watched by 5 billion people. That's about 63% of the world's population. In 2018, a record 3.5 billion people tuned into the World Cup hosted in Russia, with 1.1 billion people watching the 90-minute finale. To put that in comparison, the 2022 Super Bowl was viewed by 112 million people worldwide. As a result of such a large-scale event, it is no surprise Qatar could reap numerous benefits that spread far beyond the realm of the sporting industry. Going back to 2010, the announcement for who would host the 2022 World Cup was handed down. The winner to organize the 222 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. Qatar would defeat the United States, Australia, and South Korea to host the world's biggest sporting event. The decision was not without controversy. The small oil-rich country with just under 3 million people situated on a peninsula in the Arabian Sea, covered with massive sand dunes and salt pains, had no history in the World Cup. They severely lacked any infrastructure to host such an event. The temperatures scorched 45 degrees centigrade or 113 degrees Fahrenheit during the months of June and July when the event usually takes place. To say Qatar winning the 2022 World Cup bid was met with universal disapproval would be quite an understatement. Thank you for giving Qatar a chance. And we will not let you down. Set out to prove everyone wrong, they opened up their pockets, and over the last 12 years they completed the largest infrastructure project in World Cup history. They have reportedly been spending to the tune of nearly $400 million a week over the last decade to prepare for the FIFA one-month tournament. Qatar has built seven new state-of-the-art stadiums from the ground up, installed an entire new network of roads and rail lines, expanded the Doha International Airport, as well as built out the hotel and guest capacity to 80,000 some rooms. Qatar even constructed a new city. The city the city of LaSalle, which is scheduled to host the opening ceremonies and final match, didn't even exist 15 years ago. In aggregate, they will have spent $229 billion when it's all said and done. To put that number in perspective, compared to other host cities, that is 16 times what Russia spent in 2018, 20 times what Brazil spent in 2014, and 63 times what South Africa spent in 2010. While Qatar's bill for hosting the World Cup seems rather unworldly, this is all part of their plan for wider economic diversification. For the most lavish and controversial World Cup of our times, no expense has been spared in fulfilling that of the most basic requirements for the major football tournament, even the grass playing fields. The grass journey has been quite the roller coaster. For some reason, one of the least reported on issues for this year's cup. The last thing organizers need is superstars Lionel Messi and Kiliana Mbappé unable to entertain a global audience because of dodgy surfaces. Due to Qatar's location in the Middle East, desert natural landscape, and difficulty growing healthy grass, you might imagine the most environmentally sustainable and best outcome for the players would be for them to train and play on artificial turf during the month-long tournament. The rules do outline by FIFA, soccer's global governing body, that matches may be played on natural or artificial playing surfaces. Even with all the environmental challenges of maintaining healthy, durable grass in the Middle East, Qatar opted for the real thing. The World Cup bid evaluation report for Qatar contains a single explicit sentence regarding the grass. All stadiums will have grass pitches, so it was decided without question that Qatar would need to find the best grass they could find from a different region of the world that could withstand the harsh temperatures while maintaining an equitable playing field during the matches. Now, this is not unusual. In 2014, Brazil flew in Canadian grass to seed its playing fields. And Russia, during the 2018 World Cup, used a mixture of different types of grass seed from Denmark, Oregon, and Germany. The Qatari FIFA committee sought bids from dozens of different companies around the world to ultimately award the contract to a Dutch firm, Hendricks Grassouten, who are well known in the industry and have supplied turf for the major tournaments in recent years, including the 2006 World Cup, 2008, and 2016 European Championships. This was a huge win for the Dutch company as the sheer amount of money and involved in prestige and being awarded the World Cup contract is a dream for any business in the turf industry. With the type of grass picked out in the firm to supply it, they got to work and over the last six years, groundskeepers and guitar have been working year round, flying in tons of seed, testing, harvesting, and maintaining eight stadium pitches, 136 training pitches, and 40 backup pitches, equaling 15 million square feet or 4.5 million meters of surface area. And the water bill has been astronomical. In order to stay healthy, each pitch requires 50,000 liters of desalinated water during the summer and 10,000 liters of desalinated water during the rest of the year, equaling 1.4 billion liters or 356 million gallons of water consumption annually, equivalent to 550 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And all these years of preparation is done just so the grass is in the best possible condition for the month-long FIFA tournament, even though none of it will be used beyond December of 2022. But things would go south in the spring of 2021. British newspaper The Guardian came out with a report that approximately 6,500 construction workers 
players have been killed while working on various venues for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Just two weeks later, in March of 2021, the Dutch firm would shockingly pull out of the turf agreement, citing harsh working conditions for the construction workers and a high number of casualties amongst immigrant workers, as well as the low-quality standards pursued by the local organizing committee in terms of grass for the main stage. So with no football turf and 20 months until the tournament's start date, Qatar had to audible to a new turf vendor. A United States firm in Georgia would quickly step up. And since then, they have flown in 140 tons of grass seed from the United States on climate-controlled aircrafts, working around the clock in effort to be ready for FIFA 2022. The whole problem with all this is football pitches need a minimum of 14 months to be grown and harvested in a normal climate. And considering they have been working to perfect the Dutch grass for six years, time is not on their side. Organizers have declined to say how much the turf program has cost, but one can only imagine the billions spent in effort to avoid any issues with the World Cup's most necessary element.